Haere Mai to Awakarangu Park in Wellington. Once again, we have Dogma facing off against Balboa from Auckland. My name, as always, is Blim and I'm joined here in the booth by the one, the only, the inimitable, Richie Harris. Richie, what kind of a game have we got ahead of us in this 2024 Division One Ultimate Championship? Oh, we start off with a great D by Ben Jar. Um, honestly, Group Balboa, strong team. They've struggled a bit to open, but they've definitely got the potential to upset Dogma here. Dogma have started off with a win against Hammertron and Brightside, and they go deep into the end zone and get the quick score. Um, yeah, we go straight into it. Dogma working with a quick turn against Balboa. Easy put in. 1-0 up. And, on, and honestly, I think I think that's going to be a really, really good thing. We've seen Dogma come in off two wins into this match so far. Balboa have had two very narrow losses coming in. They want to put their first one on the board. Um, but that's exactly what Dogma are doing. They're coming in riding high after two pretty convincing victories. So for them to just pour on the pressure early in the point, generate that turn and snap it shut and start things off with the break is just a fantastic uh, way to kick off this game. We're going to see Groot come out on offense now. Um, a really good opportunity to answer back with a hold of their own. Uh, we know they've got the capability to do it. They've been putting points on all day. It's just as to whether or not uh, Dogma is going to give them enough of a channel, enough of an opening to squeak through and put it on the board. Oh, listen, I'm sure Dogma will be incredibly happy with Harry Jones opening up that scoreline early. Um, yeah, Balboa have, have had 23 points scored in the first two games. That's how close they've been coming. Well, it's only been a single turn away against Hammertron. Like... They've definitely got the potential. They've definitely got a strong squad. They've got a couple of huge players and, you know, Brady Jones, Ronnie Reddings. Like, the list is there. They just need to create something, get some turns when they need it, and really fight hard for the victory. We've got Eric Stewart with the desk to initiate for Groot. Looks back, finds Buckingham, the oldest player in the Opens division. Works it back with Stevenson and then comes across in to Liam Evans who goes deep. Two on one. Oh, and he, Stevenson almost gets above and takes a beautiful mark. Great. Just drops it off the fingers there. Huge use of the height by Max Stevenson. One of only two Stevenson siblings to make it to Division 1 in impressive. the 2024 summer season. Josh Cooper now with the disc. He's going to look downfield to see if he can find something. He finds oh, just barely there, Bryn Douglas. He'll look to reset from the back. There's nothing doing. He'll put a little push pass over the top. Binding Caleb Milne. He'll look to cut it back inside. There's not a lot of movement yet. So we'll just work through the hands of Owen Binchy. And we've got a call, a travel call, I believe. Oh, no, just I think, I just think that was a pick. So just for those watching at home, Ultimate being a self-officiated sport, players take it upon themselves to learn the rules as the big shot goes up. Benjar underneath, but it's taken from him by Charles Utteridge. Huge take by Utteridge to go two up over Groot. Uh, just a little bit more info on that pick. If a defensive player's ability to follow the line of their offensive counterpart is impeded by the positioning or movement, of other players on the field in such a way that they wouldn't be able to stick to their offensive player without drawing contact. That constitutes a pick. Players stopped and players are allowed to make up the to the position where they feel they reasonably would have been had that pick not occurred. And Dogma just get if you we look at this replay now, they've just got two two people essentially boxing out the third player who is Braden Jones of Groot and essentially just creating a contest between two teammates. You're never going to lose that contest. The only way you're going to do it is by faulting against yourself. So Dogma giving themselves every opportunity to go up 2-0 and having a fantastic start only a few minutes in the competition. And, and I mean, really, that's, that's what we're kind of expecting to see from Dogma. They're two wins up. Um, not other, I think probably uh, Wildcats are going to be the only other team who can lay a claim to a record like that, in, even this early in the tournament. So some really, really strong offensive ultimate uh, from our uh, Christchurch uh, third place finalists during last year's, uh, they do last have, year's tournament. They do have a history of being champions at this event. So, you know, they're trying to, to get back to that level again. They've been coming close every year that I've been attending, but just never really making it across that finish line. So yeah, it's it's not a it's not a New Zealand Ultimate Championships without Dogma in the top four, typically speaking. So we see the big pull coming out. We're gonna we've got Jessup underneath it for Dogma. Oh, with a touch oh. and a drop. And Listen, that is that's a 
an unfortunate turnover to give away so close to the end zone. It's a high quality pull by Taylor and Arts to get it high and getting drop and just to, to create that sense of overconfidence and catching the pull, which you always want from a, from a decent start. And it's going to be Jack Lewis to pick up, bringing the disc to the end zone. We see a great early. Oh, that's good day. Bruno Barnes denies it. John Luke Fenn got himself open, but the, the length of Bruno Barnes is able to, to snuff that out fairly easily. I mean, you can tell how fast Bruno Barnes is. He's wearing his hat backwards. And so Groot, Jessup's going to get another shot. That early shot looking for Max Stevenson's not going to come away. Has to go around to Stewart, losing yards in the process. We've got Fenn on the mark. It's Reddings. It's a good contest there by Luke Doyle. Jessup uh, one more time. Got Stevens as an option. And Finds Barnes instead. He's got Stewart deep and he's going for him. It's going to be too far, I think. But Stewart did very, very well to escape the defense, get a decent lead, get a decent stretch on. Just couldn't get the disc to him, unfortunately. Yeah, really pushing towards that near sideline. I wonder whether or not Stewart maybe bailed out of that cut a little early. Might have had an option. That was such a good pull. I mean, coming in high, making Jessup actually reach for it was, was the winning play there. I think Jessup just wanted to get the, the play on the way as quickly as he could. As we see Dogman now taking it back from their own end zone. Out now, we've got John Luke Fan working it through the hands. Disc now with Luke Doyle goes back across. Santo Linnartz. Stevenson, Stevenson looking to cover that deep space, supported by Barnes. Both of those really tall, fast players keeping their head on a swivel, recognizing the threat that is Jack Lewis's foot speed. Um, he's just such a great and aggressive receiver, particularly in, the, in our youth space, in our under-20s, under-24s. We've seen a lot from him, particularly in the Trans-Tasman series that uh, all TTVs also brought to you. And just recognizing that Groot see him as a threat, um, it's good to see that their defense is adapting to that as well. This now Luke Doyle looks back inside, finds Jack Lewis. He's going to try and make something happen a bit more further downfield here. Going with a vertical stack and just creating cuts out of it. And Dogma goes deep. Oh, it's... Finn getting the touch. Lewis was going for it. He maybe saw that the line of the disc wasn't quite optimal for him, so he left it to his downfield teammate, uh, who was just a little bit too deep there. So real almost comedy of errors on that one. So we're going to give the disc back to Groot now. We've got Stewart in the upfield space. Effectively, the disc essentially is bisected to offense players there. Bruno Barnes using his height and length just to take that disc down and it'll look downfield but doesn't see anything quickly. So cuts it back inside to number two, Liam Evans, who brings it back out. Dirty little inside break to find Ronnie Reddings. Stanley Reddings now. Cuts it back out again. Back to Reddings as Max Stevenson pushes the up line, really trying to stretch the field down towards the defensive end zone. You can see him earlier looking for that deep shot. He's now trying to create an option himself deep. Great cut there by Ronnie. Looks off Stanley Reddings. Can't get around the defense. Well, the group cutters just selling back into a stack and then making plays out of it. So that we're losing a little bit of the structure from that vertical stack from the group side. That's They're able to put the long shot. shot up. Oh, it's a great contest there by Justin Lee. Fantastic. Going up against Bruno Barnes. Look, he, he read that play, anticipated it, and just followed all the way down. Got front position and was able just to knock the disc down and create a great defensive pull. So we're seeing Groot out of a kind of loose stack. We've got Jessup looking to be an initiating cutter. We're seeing a substitution taken. Yeah, Nico Sanchez for Stanley Reddings. I think Justin Lee has also come off there as well. Disc, so the disc is now live. Dogma with an opportunity to go three points unanswered. Finds Lewis. It's quick disc movement with a heavy shot. Ah, oh, just a little bit too high there. Wong There's just can't come down with it. It's Nico Sanchez to initiate. Now, ZY Wong made a great effort there, but just couldn't get his hand to it. Nice. 
nice cut by Jessup. That's a great Immediate defensive. Immediate touch by Sam Taylor Nuts. Disguise the hand block and just put it out there late as we see the replay now. Oh, that 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 was just too much, really. Boop. Just a little little bit of a shuck and just jab out to, to bring it in and get the turn. And then just can't bring it in for the second play and a shot on the end zone there. Taylor Nuts will be a bit disappointed with himself. Ah, the conservation of greatness in full effect here at Awakairangi Park. The desk is going to go back to the mighty hands of Eric Stewart for Balboa, hoping for the one-two punch. It's going to get them on the board. A few cuts coming, but there's not going for anything. And potentially contact. Yeah, so it looks like there's going to be a marking infraction called, uh, possibly relating to disc width or just how close Finn is uh, to Eric Stewart on that mark. Nice little high release to Max Stevenson. To Ronnie Reddings again. There's not a lot developing on that inside, so he doesn't gain much yardage from that shot to Max Stevenson, who puts it up, but it's fading early. Can Reddings get underneath it? Not quite. I mean, it's a good idea. They haven't, they haven't had many deep shots. They haven't really been able to create a lot from that stack. They've been able to, to get the short passes going okay, Groot. Uh, Balboa here, but effectively they just need to take something just to change things up a bit and see what they can transform. It was a good idea, didn't come off. As Dogma have worked it back up the field very, very quickly already, about halfway down. Francis has found 39, G.Y. Wong. Looking to go back Ooh. inside. Manages to bounce off Sanchez on the step through. Doyle now. Good take there by Noah Valley. It's Taylor Nance now working with Vala on the midfield. Great cut by Doyle. He's got a good sack in the end zone. They're just waiting for some breaks to occur. See here if Valley can find an option. He's got a cut. And it's well taken there. Dogma go. Three points unanswered. And we see... Campbell Jordan, coach for Balboa, signaling for a timeout. Three is the magical number, folks. Quite often in a game of ultimate, uh, any time an opponent can get three points on the bounce unanswered, you'd call a timeout because as a team, particularly as a team on the, on the worst side of that three-point deficit, you've got to think, what are they doing? that's working and what are we doing that's not what adjustments can we make that's going to allow us to start putting the points on the board um, we've seen some really good disc movement on display here from Balboa I think they may be getting a little bit eager with some of their long shots um, I, I, well I think they've both had incredibly similar offenses it's just a case of Dogma have been able to leave a lot of open space but also create incredible cuts into it and actually take their opportunities when they've come uh, the marking has been good, not great by Balboa. Uh, it could improve a bit, and that's probably where we're seeing the biggest difference. Dogma has been dogmatic in stopping the, uh, the offense from moving away from that stack and actually following them all the way through. And even when you saw in deep shots with Max Stevenson going long and Ronnie Reddings going long, there was always that coverage there on the inside just to create a bit of pressure and to try and stop any score from occurring. Yeah, and again, we've seen a lot of that already uh, this this uh, day. I mean, we had a very tight match between the Bomber Cats and Oaf. We saw some very similar things. Um, those outside and forehand shots getting put up. They curve out uh, towards the far sideline for most uh, right-handed players if we're moving from the right to the left, uh, which based on just the way that the game went, that was where most of our offense seemed to be going. And those shots would come out, but then they'd tend to fade back over the, the reach of the intended receiver, and that generated a lot of turns. I think we've seen some similar shaped throws from Balboa when they're making that same attack line. I think it's also, you know, we say it so many times, but the fact that we've got such a calm day in Wellington, you don't really prepare for that when you're coming up looking for a national championships. So odds are they weren't training for a, for a nice regular sort of game. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. 
like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. And so as we come back in, just another huge thank you to the team at Ulti TV. Um, the very best streaming here in New Zealand, Australia and around the world. They've been instrumental in bringing coverage to your screens uh, for our New Zealand events for the last several years. Some of the absolute best in the business to get it done. And if you want to help them continue bringing Ultimate to your screens, head on over to patreon.com slash Ulti TV. Give us your spare change. Balboa breaking from the huddle, looking a lot more enthused than they did a couple of minutes ago. They haven't been doing badly. The scoreline really doesn't show, you know, everything about this game. Effectively, Balboa, when they are, when they do have the disc, they are moving it. Probably just need to turn up a couple of smaller bits and pieces. And essentially, when they're, it's almost like they need to force a space to be left open and then have people charging into it rather than like evenly breaking at separate times. Yeah. I mean, in this game in particular, we're really getting the opportunity to see a side of Dogma that I think a lot of Dogma fans have been waiting for over the last few seasons. I mean, they're coming into this match alone undefeated. We're starting to see them really start to gel uh, as a team. They're picking up each other's weaknesses. When they're leaving gaps, they're closed by someone further in the downfield space. It's not creating a lot of opportunities for a team like Balboa to really chip through. We've got Holloway with the disc now as we see Balboa in a vertical stack. Let's the reset go through to Sanchez. Nice aggressive undercut by Stanley Reddings and a quick snapshot through to Hosokawa. Oh! Jessup and Holloway underneath. Oh, but it's take eaten it. up. That's Brent Douglas firing back for Dogma, looking for Caleb Milne with a long shot. Easily eaten up. What a good score. Good grief. I say, if you see an opportunity streaking away like that, you take it. That's a fantastic throw and a fantastic reading of the game and anticipation from Caleb Mellon to start that cut and just carry on through, get the disc, good score. So we see the turnover here. It was a good battle. It was a two-on-one group. It was just a great take there by Bryn Douglas. And then he just launches looking for Caleb Milne, who always has an acknowledgement of where the disc is, keeps it in front of him, and just snaps at the end. I mean, and that's the thing, right? We've seen uh, Bryn Douglas put on a bit of a show for us in Credo over the last couple of seasons. Uh, he really is one of the premier male handlers, particularly in the youth space. Um, some of his options can be a little bit of aggressive. Uh, we see him quite often when he's in the sort of uh, the offensive half. We'll see him put up a lot of really high angle blades that will drop right in on his uh, on his receiver. Uh, but also when he's got the space, he's got those long shots as well. They come in not too high. So there's not a lot of float. There's not a lot of time for the defense to get into position, but they're high enough that. Um, Receivers like Milne can get a read on them early and get themselves into position to meet that disc comfortably in the end zone. Just a fantastic point there. Um, um, the Dogma setup has clearly recognized that as well because they're even starting to bring him, bring him through their leadership group as well. So that's been great to see his development throughout the last several years. And so Dogma now four up over Balbar with a pull to send it out one more time. Charles Archridge there with the pull. Wasn't a bad one. <laughs> Comes down. Stanley Reddings now through the hands to Nicholas Sanchez. We're seeing a zone defense here by the looks of things. Just a bit of a change up. Ben Jar scrambling across, but it's not stopping. Also, Kawa get through. Working with, uh, with Holloway there. Sees the open man and finds him beautifully. And that's it. That's going to get Bel Group Balboa on the board. The score is now 4-1. A great clean hold. Listen, yeah, I, un I understand Dogma's position there. they up 4-0. You want to try something out, see if you can you know, change things up. Don't get too comfortable. But with that zone, Balboa played it perfectly. They just cut through, quick ones and twos, just broke their way through the zone. And that's all you need to break it. If you start breaking it and the zone doesn't catch up, all you need is short, simple passes, and you'll get the score eventually. I mean, and that's exactly it, right? One of the key things, the reason that a, a zone offense like the one that we just saw from Balboa works is there's an expectation defensively that when you set up a zone, 
the players who aren't directly on the mark still have to give a three meter window between them and the player with the disc and it's that those tiny little windows that we saw the group elbow offense chip through running right behind the disc uh and then it's just those little pop passes and the momentum carrying them two three steps past the front of that zone the moment the front leading the leading wall of that zone is out of position they aren't able to do their job that's all it takes and so if we get to see some more great zone offense like that from Group Balboa, I certainly will be pretty happy. As you were saying, Rich, there's a couple of ways to go um, to, to break past the zone. One of them, backwards and forwards over the front, try and tie them out, or fitting to their name to just punch right through. <laughs> Michael Jessup there doing, trying to get revenge, I think, from the pull that he dropped earlier. It's just going to be bricked and taken back in. So that's going to be brought to a place about 18 metres in front of the defensive end zone. Uh, so there's going to be no positional advantage conferred uh, to Group Balboa by having that disc go out of bounds. Typically, if you can get the disc close to the edge of the sideline, you get to use all of that out of bounds space as an extra defender. It just narrows down the field of focus for those throwers, but it's not going to stop Dogma's offense as we've got Jack Lewis finding Taylor Nance to Fernando. Back to Lewis. Just a small bit of triangle play through to Oscar Francis, who goes back outside of Taylor Nance. Quick disc movement. Gets the job done for Dogma. I mean, that's exactly what you want to see, right? Balboa came out, showed that they can do that quick. One, two, give, go. Nice work through that zone offense. And Dogma said, well, we're already up by three. We might as well come back and do a little bit of that ourselves. And I think that's one of the wonderful things, and it's something that really speaks to the depth and experience of this Dogma team, is that they they will show oh you've you've put some some skills uh on for us um we're gonna do the same it's it very much reminiscent of that part in the Br princess bride um they're not left-handed either so great work by dogma to put that one on the board the score is 5-1 we still have a four point lead to the side from christchurch um strong favorites really really hungering for that top spot in in their pool after this game yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the things that I've noticed, especially at that point, is that they're just doing like little triangles of players as well. There you saw Fernando, Taylor Nance, and Lewis just move their own triangle, swing it around up, and then once the break was, was made and the defense was scrambling to catch up, all you need is a one-two punch into the goal. Absolutely. And we're going to see Dogma's defense one more time. It's like Owen Benchy there with the disc. Nice oh. high outside pull. It's going to touch down only with a lot of roll. Looking for the sideline. Oh, oh that is Eric a beautiful Stewart. pull. Leaving Groot on the back foot. Giving Dogma plenty of opportunity to get into position. Making them lose yards without really gaining any advantage. Fantastic work by Benchy there. Stewart was just looking to take it out and stop the momentum of the disc with his foot, which he would have been perfectly allowed to, and you're allowed to pick up from wherever it stopped, but just missed it. Nice through shot. Liam all the Evans way there. Through to Liam Evans. We are going to see a little bit of a zone look again from Dogma. Back to Stewart. Liam Evans was looking deep a couple of seconds ago. But, uh, but, I mean, this is an opportunity, right? We've seen Group Balboa work effectively against the zone previously. Are they going to just do the same thing again? We've got Eric Stewart. We know he knows how to move the disc. Looks like the zone's closing in a little bit. It's a little bit tighter. It's closing off some of those windows that were so exploitable on the last Groot offense. Well, one of the things I noticed downfield is Groot is trying to create a two-and-one mismatch against the deep zone. Really trying to flood that space and allow for a deep shot to go up going to force those deep defenders to really pick a threat and, and that creates a bit of an opportunity there oh a great little lefty backhand through there well done to running readings he set that up about 30 seconds before the disc got to him big hammer oh, bruno barnes was always out there he's been out there for about two minutes just stalking that sideline and he gives it off great score by Groot. nicely done i mean and and that's really it i mean i think that it was good to see that um even against that same zone offense, Groot was still able to adapt to it. The zone was a lot more aggressive. It was a lot more compact. And so those through shots that we saw them exploit last time weren't as available. Uh, but that didn't stop players like Stewart, uh, like Evans, really working the disc left and right, using the full width of the field. But Bruno, Bruno Barnes, you couldn't see him because he was so far off screen. He'd been like stalking that deep 
near side to your screen zone for a very, very long time. He was just waiting for an opportunity to get the disc and potentially he was looking for a hammer earlier on. He was cutting up and back. But just sitting in that soft part of the zone where there's not going to be anyone who's able to cover you off should the disc get out there, phenomenal stuff. And that, that is really a fantastic thing as well to see when you've got a player like Bruno Barnes who's parking up deep. Because he's pulling into that deep space, what's happening is the players who are, uh, are deep defenders in that zone, they're going to have to respond to that in some way. As tempting as it is to collapse in and provide additional support for the aggressive cuts that are, are coming through to try and work the middle of that zone, if you leave that deep assignment alone to cover uh, and to compress that zone in towards the, the defensive half, then you leave players like Bruno Barnes open. Um, and so just his presence there was enough to stretch the zone, which, which kind of opened things up for a group offense. So Thanks. great work there. Again, Lewis, Taylor, Nartz, Fernando. Just a bit short there for Fernando. It was a good bid. But that trio of players has worked together really, really well in this, this line that they've got now, Dogma. Stanley Reddings to pick up, initiate, supported by Sanchez as we see Group Balboa come out of a vertical stack. They've been a solid handling pair to start. This comes out to Blake Holloway. Manages to get a tumble out of Fernando. It's Horsel Carl with a one oh, touch and Jessup with the great second. Great move, Jessup. Toes in. Save what a turn. clean shot. Absolute. Oh, Ooh, big oh. bid. And. We're going to let those players have a bit of a discussion about that. That's some great discussion there by Blake Holloway, recognizing that his momentum had already carried him out of bounds before he was going to secure control of the disc. Even though there may have been contact, had the contact not occurred, he still would have generated a turnover from that. Correct. No, Fernando and Holloway having great spirit there and a good conversation. Yeah, fantastic work by both of those players there. A great bid. It was, a, it was, great, it was a, great intensity on the bid. It was a um, great bid, but his, his feet were in the air. There was no shot he was coming down with it. So, and so it's going to give the disc back to Dogma, hoping to make it a four-point game yet again. We've got Jack Lewis to pick up and initiate, marked by Ashton Reed for Balboa. He's got Taylor Nartz and Fernando out the front we need to create some cuts so it goes across finds Noah Valle who then goes back out Oscar Francis back to Richard Fernando just running it through the handlers now he'll look for Taylor Nuts and he does a beautiful shot to find him it's a little a dirty little inside break on that one and Justin Justin, Justin Lee, Lee for the score. Dogma go to six. Well, he's, he's, been, he's been superb in not only using his height, but marking the tall players, Justin Lee. It's good to see him walk away with the score today. He also came off second best earlier on, so it's good to see him back on the field too. So we look at the replay here. It's a dirty little throw from Fernando to Taylor Nartz. A gorgeous pickup. Taylor Nartz only had about two steps on his marker. And then goes to the deep shot. Justin Lee had just created enough separation. Does the job. That's good work by the trio. We've got some uh, live scores coming through us from ongoing fields. We've got the Misfits playing the Furious Blueberries. Uh, both sides who have looked very, very strong today. Misfits are currently up 4-3. to three. Got Brightside, who have beaten Group Balboa in this game, but lost to Dogma, playing Hammertron, who have lost as well to both... Uh, sorry, they beat Group Balboa and lost to Dogma. Same thing. Um, Brightside currently up 5-4. to four. That's going to be a close one. Absolutely. And we've got Nexus against Pick and Mix, who are currently up 5-0. to zero. I mean, Nexus, uh, a strong favourite to see, certainly in our bracket play, just historically... Uh, the only thing stopping them uh, making the finals in last year's Open, uh, sorry, last year's Women's Division Final uh, was an early semi-upset as the visitors Ellipsis had come through and managed to just pip them in the final spot. Well, speaking speaking of upsets, I thought I saw it earlier, but I've just had it confirmed. Misfits were playing Nexus on the far field during our earlier game between Pick and Mix and the Furious Blueberries. Uh, Misfits actually walked away with a win. At one point, they were down pretty significantly. Uh, I think it was about a three-point run that Nexus had. So it's a phenomenal effort by Misfits to come back and then win that game. But they're going to have to try and follow through.
As Dogman and Greg Balboa look to set us up again. Dogman with a four point run as they've held for the last essentially two exchanges. They had a 4 0 lead to start us off, you may recall, and now they're up 6 2. <laughs> Anything you would look to change from the grid offense, Bell? Their uh, player? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 interesting because we've seen the dogmat zone defense come down to great effect, and yet we've seen the Balboa offense adapt to that really, really quickly. So they're not struggling against the zone defense. It's mainly their match defense that I think is, is letting, or their match offense rather that's letting them down. So maybe that's where the strength of the Dogma side is. We see a great roller pull from Brent Douglas. That's two superb roller pulls in a row from Dogma. So I think maybe just a little bit more patience, um, you know, using the full width of the field, two passes. So the way we've got set up here, we see Warren Buckingham setting up as a center, center handler. And trying to force that middle to Ronnie Reddings is going to be an immediate one touch to give the disc back to Dogma, hoping to widen it to a five point game. It was always going to be a bit of a needle thread that throw. Had the options there, but it was always going to be security from defense on the inside of that throw. Charles Uttridge working it through Josh Cooper. Now back out to Brent Douglas. Manages to sneak the reset around. Barnes looking to clog the lane, but he allows the reset into an immediate upline cut. Looked off in favor of Muldrew. Quickly through the hands. It's a one-two between Muldrew and Josh Cooper. And Dogma go up. Seven to two, now, one away from half. So it is a game to 15, folks. That means that we will take a halftime break once the first team has scored eight points at the moment. Just based on the structure of the beginning of the game, it looks to be dogma. However, uh, after giving up those early breaks, we've started to see a little bit more trading. We've started to see Group Balboa wake things up a little bit. So expect to see some real hungriness, some hunger, some fire from Group Balboa as they fight back the other way. Uh, Dogma wanting to get right back onto the field. They don't want to slow down this momentum if they can. They've got some real aggressive defense. Again, that point was only a matter of seconds. Yeah, I mean... The Great roller pull, early first touch on defense, and then one, two, three. I think it was only a handful of passes before uh, they managed to put one through to Mike Muldrew for the score. So far, every Dogma roller pull has come up aces for them. It's essentially given them an extra 20-meter gain. And effectively, Groot have just struggled very recently coming out from their own end zone and really trying to work it upfield. It may just be a timing thing, as you said earlier. I think they might have to just restructure their offense because essentially that vertical stack, they're just not coming out and just playing it properly. They moved away from that, but they've not really replaced it with anything significant. Yeah, so I'd like to see a little bit more use of the width. I mean, much in the same way as uh, in, in things like football, the ball always moves faster than the player. It's the same thing with ultimate. The disc is going to be able to move faster than the player 99% of the time. Using that width to, to beat the defense back and forth across the field, a forehand roller pull this time. Was Brent Douglas, you monster. Bruno Barnes is uh, downfield taking the pull. I would like to see him get more of an option on the a couple of hucks here because he's such a big target and he's so quick downfield. Picks up the disc now. He's looking back inside to a handler. Finds oh. Blake Holloway. Reddings was maybe there as an option, but Ben Jar aggressive on the defense, taking up just enough space to discourage that throw. We see Warren Buckingham be the center, the kind of pivot for that handler core. Stanley Reddings is looking to be a bit trapped right now, but he finds an option in Barnes. Comes back out of the Buckingham. That's looking for that quick swing across field. Finds Max Stevenson. We're starting to see those handlers weave a little bit more, moving and using the width. Another quick shot might have found a gainer to Barnes, but Ben Jar, aggressive on the defense, is going to stop that from happening. Reddings cutting back through into that handler space, but we're still seeing the disc push towards the far sideline. It's Max Stevenson again. It's a series of horizontal switches. It's not necessarily gaining them very much distance towards the end zone, but it's retaining possession and it's getting around this zone. And that's exactly what I was kind of expecting to see, is just seeing them use the width a little bit more. That zone's quite compressed. We're not going to see them be able to cut through the middle like we did on that first zone offensive point that Group Balboa put on display for us. But we can use the width. 
Max Stevenson with a couple of chippy shots, just cutting close, keeping everything nice and controlled. They're not gaining yards. They are losing a lot of field as they do this until we find Stanley Readings with a through shot. Fakes to get the zone active, finds Buckingham as Barnes continues cutting towards the far sideline. Well, you'll notice is they're starting to bring more and more handlers back to try and break the zone. So they went from three, they've increased it to four and five now. As they try and work it through Buckingham. Trying to get through that three-man cup there. But again, having those extra handlers back is definitely working, but it means that when you've got those players parked up in the downfield space, it's a thankless job to keep cutting and distracting that second line. Well, with the other goal here is to try out the three men who are manning up on that disc and just being able to get around them quite quickly enough. And you see now they've gained about half the field length from where they were before. Nice shot through to Ronnie Reddings as they push the far sideline. It's Barnes. He's looking to go back to Stanley Reddings, but Caleb Milne gets in close, and they don't gain a lot from doing that. Nice wide shot finds Stevenson. Buckingham's there. Looking back inside. He's got a quick swing to Barnes available. Goes to him. Holloway getting involved. Max Stevenson across to Buckingham again. That's it. They're starting to shift there the zone. Go. They're starting to there see that go. zone slow down. That's Stevenson. where those gaps are available. So it's Max Stevenson now. Just that tiny little breakthrough is all you needed. And it's just a case of tiring out the defense enough to start getting them to make the mistakes that we just saw. And Buckingham doing a great job of pulling the disc out of the zone, maybe taking them out of that sort of feverish see spot. Ross Field hammer there, taken really by Buckingham. Just trying to tucker him out. Working back, there's an opportunity to go wide to find Bruno Bars again. The zone is starting to sag for Dogma. Working back, puts it through to Stevenson. There's not a lot for him in the downfield There's Ronnie space. Reddings running through, can't find him. Uh, Buckingham, Buckingham under pressure, goes for the left-handed reset backhand back to Stevenson with a jump across. You can see him wind up the scuba. He wants something upside down, but it's Barnes who's going to catch it on the near sideline. There's just not enough movement in that end zone. Oh. Eaten up by Brent Douglas. Not oh, today. Wow. That was such fantastic offensive patience by Balboa oh. up until it wasn't. It's amazing slow tempo, and Bruno Barnes now looking injury to... Injury called. Cool. An injury's been called. Brent, uh, Brent Douglas may have tweaked something on that great run through. Uh, it was a little surprising for him not to be able to get that disc. So I think that uh, injury may have definitely interfered. Looks like the turnover is still going to stand. But we're going to see Fernando take the field for number 77, Bryn Douglas. I think, I think Douglas rushed right at the end there, just pulled up and tweaked the ankle as he reached for the disc. He wasn't going to get there, but it was good effort nonetheless. Um, Groot Balboa will be grateful for that second opportunity. I don't think they're going to rush it this time. Well, you, you look downfield. Essentially, it's a four against two now. They're not going to move it as quickly. Make an impact, Rich! Make an impact! Buckingham, second, third effort. I think he... Cover oh, Rich. that's going to be... Uh, Rich. They've called it in. Cover they have. Rich. Rich. Yes, yes! Nice little up line to Jessup. Can he close? A nice inside shot to open things up. Three Beauty. players there. Three or no. <laughs> I mean, can't complain about that. It's great offense. We have a confirmation that it was just a minor tweak from Bryn Douglas, so we are going to have the benefit of seeing that man back on the field. Oh, he's a handler's handler is what he is. Now if we look at Group Balboa here, what they've done, I mean, that was a great second and third effort by Buckingham, by the way. They're just looking into that end zone, and there's just probably not enough movement in there to give enough option to the handler with the disc. You can just see that when they, are, when they do move, They've got three going to the same spot. Like, that's that's what you want. They don't have people following them when they are running and when they are cutting out. It just needs to be more movement from that offense in that end zone. And I think that they've almost got everything pieced out. Yeah. They played that zone pretty much to perfection. They slowed it down, took an age, but they did the job. Everything yeah, went mean, to hand. Everything was held. That's exactly it. I mean, I think I think that that, that turnover uh, when we saw Brent Douglas uh, tweak on the upline was necessary for Groot to give them back that opportunity. I think right towards the end, they started to get a little impatient, maybe forced it. Good for them to get that opportunity back uh, and be able to close it this time uh, to Stanley Redding. And also just a, a shout out as well to Michael Jessup's inside break throw there. Uh, I mean, uh, his, his filming company, Breakside Flicks, 
Uh, that's where you get the name from when you've got to throw that good. So nice way to set up, really open up the field for them. We're going to see a nice pull from him. Nice oh, and long. A little flat. bit of outside edge. It's going to touch down. Jack Lewis with the disc. Center field supported by Fernando. As we said, Taylor Nance stretching the width of the field. Finds Oscar Francis down your near side. He goes. Decent looking forehand. Finds Luke Doyle. Goes up the line again to Taylor Nance. He's got right. options in the end zone. Won't go to them. We'll go back to uh, over Fernando's head. Finds Luke Doyle unmarked. An interesting choice, but it works out for them. A thread straight past Markwick. Oh, it was a great oh, bit. What a great play That's for that great one by anticipatory Sanchez. Anticipatory defense just doesn't get there. It's top notch work by Sanchez. And that is going to be enough to give Dogma the first half of the game. The score is 8 3. Dogma from Christchurch up over Group Balboa from Auckland. Uh, Dogma in a great position to spend the first uh, day undefeated in their pool as they look to go 3 and 0. Oh. Such a good effort from Sanchez there. It's a great contest. Great uh, but it's still anyone's game. Only time will tell. We will be back with you uh, for the second half. The exciting conclusion of our stream coverage for the first day of the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships Division 1 at Oakairangi Park in Wellington. My name is Blair Munro. I'm Richard Harris. And we'll be back very soon. He's in a great spot. Yeah. He's in a perfect spot. Yes, his massive head has blocked everything. Oh. That was a huge play, yeah, but we have seen face. none of it. Finney, Finney, he's done it.
Welcome back, folks, to the second half uh, of our exciting match, the last game of our stream coverage for the first day of the 2024 Division I New Zealand Ultimate Championships for the Opens Division. Here in Awakaringa Park in Wellington, we have Dogma up by five of a group bell ball from Auckland coming out on offense, so a great opportunity for them to continue widening the gap. Nice, quick, around work to find Taylor Nance, who's all but run out of his cleats on a big line drive up to Fernando for an early score. A point so quick, we barely had time to introduce ourselves. My name, as always, is Blair Munro. And I'm Richard Harris. And what a pleasure it is to be here. Such beautiful weather. The wind is really stable, which is uncharacteristic for Wellington. So big thanks to the council for putting in the effort to get that one tidied up for us. Uh, we're seeing some really clinical ultimate on display. Dogma coming in off two strong wins. Group Balboa coming in off two very narrow close losses. And Taylor Nuts coming in off breaking a cleat, throwing up a beautiful backhand up the line to find Justin Lee. Just a just fantastic work there. Uh, beautiful work by Dogma. That's the one big shot from Taylor Nuts. Nice low around backhand up that near sideline. On the open side too. I mean, that's that's great. It's a hard. It's a it's a it's a great throw, but also, I mean, what a cut from Fernando to develop that. Typically, when you're making a cut to the open side, the expectation is the defense is in a good position to shut that down at the receiver. And with Fernando's separation there, wide open, managing to put another one on the board for Dogma. Uh, it looks like they're starting to walk away with this game. Oh, look, one of the things Dogma's been doing really, really well as well is scoring points quickly. They've about three times during this game had a point that's been finished in about two minutes or less, which is what you want to see. You know, if you can come out and absolutely motor through, get a couple of quick scores on the board, especially in between a break, yeah, you're singing. Absolutely. And another roller pull. The roller pulls have really been working for Dogma today they as well. They absolutely have. They've just been... Forcing the Groot Balboa to be a little bit on the back foot, a little slow to initiate. Uh, but that's not stopping them gaining yards. We're seeing a zone look here from Dogma, really looking to shut down space rather than just the players. The way I kind of always think about it is the players are kind of, um, they're like guard dogs. They're tracking space, and as soon as a player comes into their territory, woof, woof, they're getting right at them. But it's not going to stop Blake Holloway chipping one through to a Warren Buckingham working Oh, gets a touch off that one. Oh, Liam Evans actually did great to get the height on to get around his defender. Yeah, Owen Ellington using those big limbs to good effect, but it's not quite going to be enough as we see Eric Stewart. We've got a wide open Max Stevenson on the near sideline. Oh, excellent play by Lewis there. Uh, Liam Evans, sorry. Not Lewis. Good Lord. Uh, Stevenson now working it back inside to Blake Holloway, finding Buckingham on the outside. They're just going to try it. They're looking for space to work it up. That's all Groot need. They, all they need is a couple of breaks through this zone, and they'll be three. It was a great bite by Owen Ellington, um, but it shifted things out of the way. Ronnie Reddings with a great big scuba over the top for Braden Jones. Ronnie Reddings is cut into the center, creating so much space there to manipulate that zone and allows Groot Balboa to just work through and get an easy point on the board. Yeah, and, and, and really that all does start with those handlers working backwards and forwards and just securing the disc, keeping things in hand until something opens up in that zone. But you can see Ronnie Redding's there in the center of your screen just running right through. There's no one defending him there. It's just perfect awareness of the game. Sees the open man there in Braden Jones and goes across across the top to find him. Yeah, we're going to see that here. So that was a great movement there to get a bite out of Owen Ellington to open things up, but it's here. Ben Jar a little bit too far in front of the throwing channel. Um, if he'd been a little closer to the disc, he would have been able to stop that upline cut down or upline throw down the near sideline, but also would have closed that window between him and the nearest Dogma defender. And just that space allowed Ronnie Reddings to capitalize extensively, getting the disc and then putting that uh, scuba up over to an open Braden Jones in the end zone. Well, Owen Benchy as well, biting on the mark, running forward and trying to defend the throw from running Reddings rather than staying on the open man in the end zone. I think that was also a key there. And so Group Balboa bring it back within five. The score is now 9-4 in this game to 15. We hit 52 minutes. We've got about 38 minutes left on the clock for you, but it's still anyone's game as we see Michael Jessup putting up a huge pull with a lot of flat... Uh, float on it. We're going to see a side stack established early. It's 
Lee as the initiating cut. Slips past Jessup and a quick shot through to Doyle. Puts a shot up, but it's blading early. Oh, Over Taylor Nartz. the top of Taylor Nartz. He was positioned well. He just didn't have the right knowledge of where the disc was. Just couldn't read it coming down. Yeah, and that angle on that disc is just so hard to read, too. Uh, I wonder if it maybe slipped a little on the release. He probably wanted a bit more float out to really use the width on that far sideline towards that far front corner and give Taylor Nance something to run onto. I think the other thing that's just happened is there's a gust coming through from right to left on your screen as well. So I probably just sped up the disc just that little bit as well and just put Taylor Nance off trying to catch it. As Bruno Barnes looking around the mark, perfectly finding Sanchez. As Groot looks, they've got gone back to match here, Dogma. So Groot will just be looking for the free man every time. Bruno Barnes looking for a deep shot, doesn't doesn't open it up. Short back to Sanchez. He and swings it out. Whips it around oh, to find well Holloway. Held. Taylor Nart's doing a great job keeping pace. It's Lee to intercept. Ashton Reed did have separation there, but just the completion could not be made. As Lee lo was looking for a cutting Fernando, just went a bit too far ahead of him there. I think I think it's a great move by Dogma to move back to that match defense. I mean, they kind of recognize who the major receiving threats are for that uh, group side. There's a big shot looking for Ashton Reed. What a oh, take. Good work. Oh, Ashton, you love to see it. Ashton Reed twice getting free of his man deep. Superb work. And Jessup with the with the ability to get the disc to him. Superb yeah, just, stuff. Uh, just honestly, uh, such a fantastic player as well. Uh, we see him on Groot. We've seen him in the mixed division playing for old boys uh, who had a fantastic tournament at our mixed division uh, late last year. I mean, it's a great contest by Doyle as well to try and well, stop Jessup getting that disc initially. But Great Reed, closing speed by Lee as and well. Lee's, Lee's that phenomenal deep defender that you want, but he just wasn't in position. He wasn't close enough to affect any play on the disc. And good composure by Reed to actually pull it down. I think, and I could be wrong, I think that's the first point Groot have scored when uh, Dogma have come down on that zone, uh, on that match defense. So they've, they've been really aggressive with their zone offense and it's worked to incredible effect for them. Uh, we haven't seen them really win those one-on-one -on -one, uh, match, uh, defensive matchups, and it's good to see that we're now creating those opportunities um, for Groot Balboa to try and, and close things, uh, make things a little bit closer. So... Nine to five. Dolly Parton is having an absolute field day out here in the first day of the Division One New Zealand Ultimate Championships. Yeah, Dogmer, of course, having that big four -oh run against match defense to start. So for Groot to come out and finally break that effectively should be a great little momentum gainer for them. Great little confidence builder. Jack Lewis now. Working well with Fernando as he has done most of this game. It works well with Taylor and Arts, the big three of Dogma. They've been excellent in the handler roles today. Fernando now looking downfield. He had a cut from Doyle, doesn't go to him. Goes oh, back across to Taylor and Arts. Beautiful find there, managing to cut right through the, the openings in the group defense. We see Barnes sagging off quite a lot, and he's giving up a lot. So we're seeing some comfortable disc movement from Dogman, but it looks like a call was made. Is it possibly a pick? I think there was a pick call when Taylor, just as Taylor Nartz, uh before he threw the disc. Okay, so just a reminder for those at home when we're talking about a pick, um, where a defensive player's ability to pursue their offensive counterpart is impeded by the movement or positioning of another player. So if they can't follow their, their offender without drawing contact, uh, that's going to be a pick, and what happens is play is stopped, and the defensive player is allowed to catch up to where they reasonably would have been had that pick not occurred. So it's a little bit of an honor system thing, um, Rich, um, but most of the time it get, gets played pretty well. We've got Taylor Nartz just resetting after a travel call by Bruno Barnes. Travels are not oh, stopped, just huge bid by Fernando. Using his athleticism, just... Arguably was in the right position to get an arm to it. Probably over jumped it, if anything. Yeah. I mean, and, th and that's, oh, that's, that's really the thing. Good effort. Like, that's a great throw. One of the things that a lot of people maybe don't sort of understand instinctively is that an inside break shot like that. Oh, great great touch. Well done, Doyle. Beautiful. Fernando's going to walk away with it in the end. 
Quick Th turn, quick score. Well done, Dogma. And that's going to be Dogma breaking double digits to go 10 over Balboa's 5. Uh, those inside break throws, they need a lot of speed on them because typically if you're trying to hit that inside channel, um, the cut is coming in very, very short. The path of the disc is going to be a lot shorter, and so it has to travel a lot faster. Oh, in Doyle. contrast... Doyle, they were great work just anticipating where the disc was going to be thrown. Such a great reception. Just good sequence there after that touch. It goes inside. Can see, can see where the eyes go. And then sees the direction, and then bang. Beautiful read by Doyle. Immediately picked up by Vala. Quick snapshot straight through to Fernando. Dogma with a solid lead, 10 to 5. They only need 5 points to get the win here. And nice. a turn around, Jay. The likes, the beautiful spin pull. You do, in fact, love to see it. I mean, it's got some distance on it. Oh, and Good the way Lord. that that fades, that's just textbook perfect, right? Just as the disc fades away from the receiver, it takes them that extra half second to get the disc. It allows the defense an opportunity to get in and close. Blake Holloway working his way through, finding Stewart. Looking for Liam Evans running through. It's a great little cut there from Evans to get through the defense. Just call back. Slight travel there. Buckingham now. Cuts across to Stevenson. Oh, it's a good effort on the D. Back to Buckingham. Managing looking for to Evans. Keep that one off the turf only just. Finds readings on the far sideline. Good leave by Holloway to let Stewart pick that one up. But there's a lot of pressure on the disc. Stewart letting it fly, just trying to get as much meterage as he could. Across to Stevenson, who's going to be looking for a forehand up the line. Fakes off a great Pit. cut by Ronnie Reddings. Stewart takes it. Slows it down just a bit. Yeah, there's not oh, a lot. beautiful. Oh, that was Inside a fantastic out. touch across by Blake Holloway to bring it back within four. The score is now 10-6. Dogma over Group Balboa. Just a little bit of an update from some of our other fields. Brightside have widened the gap over Hamatron to bring it to 8-5 uh, to the side from Christchurch. Uh, Furious Blueberries down by three against Misfits. So it was a much closer game. Uh, late stage, Misfits are looking to stretch things out a little bit more. Cannons currently one up over Hamatron Mahuika in the, also in the women's division. But it appears to be one heck of a, like, just a mud fight. Going back and forth, just really grinding it out. Defense fighting hard against offense. There's a slight edge in favor of the Cannons from Christchurch, but as we say so often here uh, in the Ulti TV booth, it's anybody's game and only time can tell. Just applaud the uh, composure there by Stewart to get the disc to Holloway once again. It's a great little shot. Those little phone booth cuts, right? He's just... It's, there's, the margins are so small, there, and it's really just who knows what little signal you give to throw off your defender and then manage to find separation. Only a half a meter away from where you were, you're finding the tiniest of channels, and it's just great patience well, to be able to get those ones through. It's everything. Everything can get you off your man, even a quick look, body language, just a quick little stutter step. The more group Balboa can open up a significant... Uh, gap between their defenders, the more likely they're going to score more points. And so they've certainly got the, the horses for the courses here. Michael Jessup again with the pull. Loads himself up like a spring and just launches it deep. Getting some very, very deep pulls by both teams here. Lewis with the disc, finds Taylor Nance near sideline, marked by Sanchez. Mark Wick, aggressive on defense, but he can't stop it. Big flick shot up. Oscar Francis celebrating before the disc had even gotten there. Fantastic. He knew that felt good out of the hand. That was a beautiful put, too. Just a nice recentering shot. It was a cut developing into that deep space for him. V E A, beautiful shot there. I mean, Taylor Nance and Lewis have been working well together all day. 
Oscar Francis had a decent lead over Bruno Barnes there. And then, wow, that's just a glorious little shot. Timeout now called. And so as we see Dogma go back up, 11-6. The question has to be raised by Group Balboa. What can we do differently? How can we stop them getting the disc? How can we make sure that we close things out on offense? We want to make sure that we are playing our game. We're playing clean. We're not giving anything away. And we've also got to put more pressure on Dogma somehow. But it needs to be clean pressure too. Otherwise what happens is you run up this massive head of steam trying to work hard and you stop working as a team. The moment you stop working as a team on defense, it becomes seven individuals trying to play defense against a team of seven cohesive offenders. We've seen that Dogma do a fantastic job of working together. I mean, as you've mentioned, Rich, we've got Fernando, we've got Taylor Arts, we've got Lewis, we've got Douglas when he's on the field. Um, they do some great work just chaining the passes, and as you point out, they almost sort of play triangles off one another they're doing a really great job of, of changing angles on the field uh, a really cohesive offense and that's something that I, I wonder whether or not Group Balboa recognizes that they have to play a defense of a similar pace to beat it you can't just have seven people getting up a roaring head of steam and losing the connectivity that we've seen them use to great effect on offense well, the other thing that you'll note, Group Balboa on offense, I think they're at their best where they're cutting through the defensive zone and when they're cutting through close to their man and actually almost getting the defenders completely out of position, grabbing an easy catch and then moving it on slowly. Every time they slow the disc down, they've come away with generally a decent setup, slowed down the tempo, they've worked their way through the hands and eventually they've been able to come away with the score, even if it's just after a turn. But it's... Looking back at the, the handling line of the likes of Buckingham, of Liam Evans, of Reddings, there's just, there's just something there that they can improve on. I think it's just... I don't, I don't think it's Huck and D like a lot of teams in this league will do, but it's certainly like they almost have to open up just a bit more, and I think that might come from essentially the downfield cutters. They just seem to be distancing themselves a bit too much from their handlers and not actually creating themselves into an option. Giving them space, sure, but that doesn't always help. Yeah, I, th I, I think you're right, Rich. I think you have you do have an instance where quite often when you've got a really tight handler core, the downfielders give them a lot of room to work. But in doing so and leaving a lot of the space for handlers to make those strike cuts, to make those upline cuts, they don't do as aggressive a job of cutting into that space to give them those options and really like test aggressively the downfield defense as well. And then it becomes a game of sort of 3v3, stopping the handler weave. And everyone else kind of mills around in the downfield space, which isn't what we want to see. And I don't think that's going to be able to carry Group Balboa to a victory. So we've got Stewart and Buckingham initiating here. They're slowly being worked backwards, but Reddings with a nice undercut. That's what we're looking to see. But we need to see them chaining those together. Multiple attempts of those undercuts. And they just need to follow through the cuts as well. There's a lot of a lot of maneuvers that are just going downfield. They're just given up on within about three or four steps. The spin shot. He puts it high. Oh, great positioning. That's uh, Blake Holloway see, with the score. See, sometimes, look, all you have to do is that. put the disc up, get yourself in the right possession, come down with it. <laughs> Listen, Buckingham had faith in his receiver downfield. And it was a great tack. Absolutely. The nice little spin fake too to, oh, yeah. to give Josh Cooper a bit of a sell was fantastic. But also to give the entire defensive line a bit of a shout. Here we go. We're going to see it again. Big fake this side. He's going to step aggressively hard. Oh! Hit him with the spin move and the fade back. I mean, great play there on defense by Fenn to try and get up underneath it. And really, that's what the defense should be doing. Um... Defense is, is kind of taught always, go early, because the offense doesn't always know how high you can jump. If you jump a little bit early, you might help throw off their timing. If they mistime their jump, you might be able to generate a turnover from that. So great work by Fenn to apply that pressure, but it's going to be Holloway who comes down with it for a clean score. Listen, Buckingham, was, that was absolutely excellent, because he also spied that his teammate was the furthest away from the desk. So if he could get it far enough... All he needed was his teammate to register that. 
He has the faith and the anticipation. Just get himself into position. To the perfection. That's I mean, all you need. Absolutely. I mean, it's recognizing where the space is relative to the receiver. And in this case, that space was into the deeper parts of the zone. So Buckingham put it out into that space and allowed Holloway to control uh, that environment to be able to pull down that score. Michael Jessup looking for another trademark massive pull of his. Oh, it's just putting on a little bit of a masterclass for us here. Take notes at home, folks. It's that little half second of you can see his whole body coil up right before he releases. It's just absolutely beautiful. If you can get consistently into the end zone every time, you're doing well. That's the way. Nice inside shot to Lewis. As Ashton Reed gets out in front of the disc, it's Fernando over Sanchez. Cuts back across to Lewis in the power position. He's not able to use it. Lee's looking to stretch the near sideline. Sam Taylor Arts opens up the midfield. Doyle now. Looking downfield, but opts to go back inside to Lewis. Using, They're looking for that Fernando option. Using the full width of the field, it's great from this Dogma offense. A cross field shot to a wide open Taylor Nartz. Gonna put it away. Clean as you like it. The score is now 12-7 to Dogma up over Group Balboa. Oscar Francis doing very, very well there to gain as much separation as he could and ended up essentially coming through untouched to score. I mean, and that, and that really is the thing. So it makes it look like the defense is standing still. Uh, but it's, it's not just a testament to his speed. It's a testament to his awareness. As we see the Warren Buckingham shot again. This is in the lead up from the last, the last score there. Again, a phenomenal shot. But simply put, it's the difference of two essentially alt completely opposite ways of creating space. One, you've got essentially the handler leading the player down the back, creating space that way. You can see it in the distance vision. He knows it's going to be there. The other one, the handler, already sees the separation created by his deep man. And, and just puts it into the space for that receiver just out to run front, on straight to. to the yep. chest. Beautiful shot there. Vinci with the big pull. It's fading back over. Buckingham hands over his eyes to block out the glare. Oh, Nearly gets bid. a touch on it. Benji chasing his own disc there. Well done. That was a fantastic play there, but Holloway's going to be able to come through with it. It's Stevenson now on the near sideline, sending those fakes, trying to bring Buckingham through over Ben Jar. Engages the reset. Ben Jar looks to close around, but it's a hammer over the top to Holloway. Stevenson again over Milne. Stevenson immediately looking to offload the disc and use those legs to get into a stronger position. We see Evans through to Holloway one more time, working with Reddings on the far sideline. A big fake for the forehand comes back to Buckingham. Back Lots across Evans. Eric Stewart downfield trying to give structure to the offense. Just gets overthrown slightly. And that's what Dogma need here. Dogma just looking to apply pressure, just getting as close as they can legally on the mark. Getting as close as they can on defense. It's coming up trumps. Sometimes that little bit of pressure is all you need to create mistakes. Oh, what a find there. That was a great shape cut there by Caleb Milne to find that far sideline. Charles Utteridge now back inside. To Mill, comes wide to Benchy, who's definitely been the man of this point so far. A blade shot through, <sighs> straight over to Cooper. Just whacked Josh Cooper's shoulder on the way through and just couldn't corral it before it hit the ground. Yeah, I mean, it, like, it was, you do love that shot selection, but you really do need the deep, the uh, receiver to be aware of it coming. Stevenson puts it up. Nice with a lot of flow. Ty oh. oh, that's. Fallen out of the hands. What a great, great effort there by Braden Jones. It's not going to be enough. Braden Jones has been one of the better receivers deep. He, I was sure he had it. It just bubbled out right at the very last second. Oh, it just hit, clips his cleat yeah, on the way down. Absolutely. I mean, that's it, right? It, it wasn't a strip. He had it clean. It just wasn't able to secure it. We see Stewart on the mark. Benchy one more time. 
The inside shot to find Benja marked by Buckingham goes up and around to Binchy as Stewart looks to close. Fires up the sideline to Douglas. He's back on the field. He puts a low forehand up. Threading through to Harry Jones now. Keeps working with Cooper up the far sideline. Atridge on a nice upline cut, but Evans is going to shut that one down. It's out and high. How? Muldrew comes down with it. Very good pressure from all the way. <laughs> Bit too much good pressure, I think. Got sold as Caleb Milne to Cooper to Milne. It's going to put them within two of a victory as Dogma go up 13 of a group Balboa's seven. Some great defensive efforts there by Balboa. But in the end, a couple of quick one-twos there off of Caleb Milne. But being able to sell that shot as well, just to get Holloway to overcommit. Essentially, it's one less defender for a few seconds. <laughs> That's a great effort. There, of course, Milne, just quick one, two, sees the open space and just starts running. I mean, that, Gets that, the front position. That Good really score. is one of the most threatening things you can do in ultimate. Um, a, a give go, particularly when you're really close to the end zone, it's just pushing towards that sideline to make that aggressive upline cut. You're going to get that shoulder in front of the defender. You're going to have that one step on them. And quite often what that means is you are cutting to the open side, so it's going to be a really easy throw for that, um, for that recipient of your first pass to make and continue that shot up along, which is fantastic work there. Dogma now within two. They can smell the blood in the water as Sam Taylor Nart's going to put up a big pull. Fielded by Nico Sanchez. Works with Stanley Reddings. A little bit of flutter guts on that reset. It wasn't super stable, but it's going to get the job done. If there's any time to do it, it's there. And Ooh, that's a and great run, run through, through by D. Doyle. Doyle anticipated it. Got in front of it. Whacked it down. I mean, it's that, and it's also Rick. Oh, I like the off-pivot backhand there by Fernando to get the upline to Lewis. Comes around as Barnes has to go wide to shut down that channel, but in doing so, leaves Fernando open on an upline cut. Lewis looking to push far sideline. Instead, it's Taylor Nartz with the no-look. Oh. Same team, lads. Same team. Great work by Dogma to pull that one down. I think they can have half a point each, but either way, it's going to put Dogma on 14. One point away from the game. Group Balboa with a long road ahead if they want to taste victory on the first day of our tournament. You can see Balboa there, just scramble offense. They, they lost a man there, a match, and Bruno Barnes was doing his best to try and let his teammates know that there was something wrong. And they just couldn't catch up. And essentially it leads to a two on zero contest. We see again Taylor Nartz with the almost half look. I think the, the only way to recover from that if you do have a match that's lost, is essentially communicate as much as you can. Let the rest of your defense know that there's a, there's a free man available and that you've either got to rapidly switch to a zone or you've got to have that like person poaching down the back, waiting for a disc to come in. And, and while I, I, I couldn't agree more, I mean, I'm, I'm known for saying that the three lines that win a game of ultimate are your offensive line, your defensive line, and your sideline, that communication is super important. So it's worth recognizing that when you've got a team like Dogma who are doing their absolute best to run Group Balboa ragged, um, quite often, if, <laughs> if you're on the back foot and you're struggling for breath, you don't have a lot in your lungs if what you're wanting to do is communicate to your teammates. I mean, Bruno Bars did his absolute best. There was pointing, there was signaling. Uh, but with all of the just gener the general noise of a game of Ultimate, the, way the sort of the blood pounding in your ears, the rush of adrenaline, it's really, really hard to take in all of the information that's available to you. So Dog were able to walk away with that point there. Uh, a timeout being called. Groot. I mean, it's eight points ahead of them. If they can hold and then seven back-to-back -back breaks, they can walk away with the win, but that's an almost impossible challenge at this point in the game. Listen, over the last week, we've seen some absolutely phenomenal comebacks. We have seen some absolutely phenomenal comebacks, Rich. I couldn't agree more. I, at this stage, like even even 
we saw a you know a five point swing in one of our previous games. Like, there's always a chance. I mean, if if Dogma somehow managed to give up this match, there's going to be tears on the sideline. Well, I mean, you know, all it needs is a couple of equipment failures, a couple of changes. Yeah, yeah and I mean, we've already been informed that uh, Sam Taylor and Arts' cleats are on their last legs. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> be, so find, be finding the nearest shop after this, I think. Yeah, uh, during the halftime I did offer, and I'll put it on the record, that if he does score a Callahan during this match, I will buy him a new pair of cleats. Um, but with only one point left to go, <laughs> we'll see what happens. A great, uh, oh, a great pull by Binchy. Through the legs of Stevenson, off the feet of Redding. Stewart does his best to recover. And that's going to put the Dogma defense in great position, but Sanchez with Stevenson trying to work early. Oh, puts a big deep. shot up, looking for Redding's. Jones in hot pursuit. Let's go quick option, quick option. Beautiful. Nice take to close that one out. Well, tell you what, Balboa were in a very dangerous position to start that off. And then all it takes is some real commitment in that deep cut from Reddings, a deep put from Stevenson to perfection. And then support play, running up, creating a simple option and a simple score. Oh, my God, Father. <laughs> my heart can hardly take it. That pull was the stuff of dreams and the stuff of nightmares. Uh, but well done to Balboa to recover so effectively from that. We see here Max Stevenson putting the big shot up. He's looking for Reading, recognizing that it's going to fall short. We see the second option. Blake Holloway pulls that one down for another score. What a beautiful way to finish that point. Listen, Blake Holloway, he knew that there was uh, no one surrounding him then. He knew he'd gone away from all defenders, and he just needed to create the option there, and he did it to perfection. Great work from him. And now one Dogma offensive hold is going to walk them away with the game. Uh, so if Sam Taylor Nance wants his cleats, he is going to have to give up the disc first. And I don't really think he's the kind of person to just let anything go. So particularly when they're on offense, I mean, again, we've got Lewis. We've got Fernando on the field. We've got uh, Taylor Nance. We've got Lee as one of their premier defenders. So a great pull from Group Balboa. But really quick to initiate and get things going. Fernando on a nice undercut. Gets the around break from Lewis over Sanchez. It gets the overcommitment from the defense. We've gone into more of his own here. Absolutely. Sanchez playing the puppy. He's doing the aggressive chasing on the disc with a couple of players behind him. But it's not going to stop Doyle getting it. Back to Lewis as they look to close. Big hammer fake and a nice lefty backhand through to Taylor Nance who fakes them around. We see Lewis getting it. Comes to Fernando near sideline. Back to Lewis and around to Lee. One more pass is going to do it. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no. Oh, the greed. Os the greed. Oscar Francis sat himself there about 30 seconds before, prepared for that exact shot the entire time and then couldn't bring it in. Good grief. <laughs> Well, they'll get an, they might get another chance. Listen, he got himself in position. We'll applaud him for that. But you need to you need to take that. Putting it up. And it's Fernando again. Francis near sideline. He's not deep this time. Doing the hard yards now he to make up for his drop. He won't be making that mistake again. It's Lewis. Decides to go around to Fernando, pushing far sideline. It's good defensive pressure on that catch there. Big fakes from Vala. Taylor Nance now nice and open. Lewis and Fernando making some very good fake cuts upfield, leaving the space open. Vala open to Francis. Calling for calm as he goes around to Lewis. Finds Fernando as they push, using the full width. Tries for the round backhand, but the long arms of Bruno Barnes are not going to let it go. Lewis back to Fernando as he looks to get that shoulder in front for an upline cut. Oh, Francis is moving around the end zone this time. We applaud that. Good work. We love to see a dynamic cutter in the end zone, but it's going to be Taylor Nance and Fernando again working with Lewis. Oscar Francis, he's standing still in the back of the end zone. He wants it to happen a second time. It's Doyle to Lee. 
for the Great save score by Lee. and the game. That's going to be us, folks, to conclude the first day of our stream coverage for the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships Division 1 here in Awakairangi Park. A beautiful finish by Justin Lee to put that one on the board and have Dogma go undefeated in day one. Their third uh, third game, 15-8 over group Balboa from Auckland. Balboa with some solid play today. Just couldn't get the job done. They've got a lot of potential here. They've got a lot to work on. But they're gonna all of these players have potential to be a force in this this division. Absolutely. It is gonna be a fantastic thing to see how they shape up over the rest of the tournament. Uh Really, I mean, considering that, that Groot Balboa, there are two teams from the Groot Club playing in this tournament. Uh, they have gone for an A-B split, although both of those teams have managed to make it to the Division 1 Championships. Really, the only thing you can ask for as a team is to be a better team on Day 3 than you were on Day 1. Um, some, some really hard-fought games by Bro Group Balboa. They haven't managed to come away with a win on the first day. Uh, but as you say, Rich, they've displayed a lot of potential, so it's going to be really exciting to watch them develop and grow and how they perform for the next couple of days. Um, we will hopefully be here to talk you through how that happens and also the development of all of our other teams that we're looking forward to bringing you the best coverage of uh, at Awakailangi Park. But until then, brought to you proudly by Ulti TV, my name is Blair Monroe. I'm Richard Harris. And we will see you again for the next one. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultra TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. TV.